Fiesta Fiesta 2024 is powered by Toyota. Fiesta. It's not just about what you see here. It's about what you feel. The community here in San Antonio all coming out, celebrating. And, you know, we talk about Fiesta all the time. This is all about people coming together, helping each other out. There are so many scholarships that are handed out here. Yeah, absolutely. And we could not do it without our hardworking crew, both in front of and behind the camera. Sarah Acosta, Adam Kasky, they are out and about in this environment. And yes, tonight the party with a purpose begins. And as Stephanie has said, this is something that not only brings us together, it also unites us in this great community this of is San, Antonio. San Antonio. Viva Fiesta! For all of us at KSAT 12, thanks for watching. Good night. Oh, Fiesta 2024 is now well underway, and tonight the plaza outside the Alamo Dome was packed for Fiesta Fiesta. The night team's Avery Everett has been out there all day long, and she brings us the sights and sounds of this official kickoff event from a first-time Fiesta goer. You did it, Avery. Your debut. How was it? It's been an incredible night, and this is only the start, but I have to be honest, I'm tired. But some of the vendors have been here since 9 a.m., and I feel like that just shows the spirit of San Antonio, how much they love the culture and love the city, and so many other people who we talked to tonight have that same exact spirit. Fiesta is my favorite time of the year. Ten days? This is my first fiesta. Oh, my God, you're a fiesta baby. I'm a fiesta first-timer, oh. so what do I have to do? You need to go out and you just need to say, are you trading? Do you have a free medal? All right, Judy, give me a rundown of all the medals that you have. What's your collection look like? It's kind of a mixture. And so I have the lime and then I have the Coronas too. We love our culture. We love colorful items and it's what we incorporate into our merchandise. And Fiesta is the time to do that. Absolutely. My mom and I did this together and I wanted to make sure she was here for this. This is our first year without her. She passed away in November, so I guess I'm a little emotional this year, but I wanted to make sure she was still here with me. Her legacy yes. lives on. Thank you. All the colors, all the people, like all the medals, all the crowns, everything. How much do you guys love Fiesta? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. What's the best part about Fiesta? I'm going to say chicken on the stick. That's the best part. So this is yours. <laughs> This oh my mine. gosh. All right, we're so going to take a bite. Cheers. Cheers to Fiesta. Viva, viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta. For sure. <laughs> oh, it's definitely spicier. <laughs> viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta. There you go. You guys have case out now. Thank you so much. Thank You've you. been so sweet. So nice to meet both of you. Thank you. Have so much fun. Viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta. Oh, I love you too. I took Judy's advice. I've been collecting and trading medals all night. I traded with those two sweet girls. But Myra, I've got to tell you, okay, something that wasn't sweet tonight, that chicken on a stick. I had a regular one, but then I had the dirty chicken on a stick soaked in a jalapeno. And I've been regretting it all night. But I am still smiling, and I'm going to be smiling over the next 10 days. I mean, this is just the best. So, Myra, back to you. I mean, you did it right, girl. Her first night at Fiesta, and she has two chicken on a sticks. You tried them both. Thank you, Avery. From now through April 28th, there are so many things going on all over town for Fiesta. Tomorrow is the start of Fiesta Oyster Bank. Then Monday, that's the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. And Tuesday, April 23rd, that kicks off Niosa. Then next Thursday, the 25th, that's Battle of the Flowers Band Festival. Next Friday, the 26th, is Battle of Flowers Parade. And then next Saturday, the 27th, there are so many things going on, starting with the King William Fair and Parade and then ending that night with the Flambeau Night Parade. KSAT has a chance for you to enjoy a special party at both the Battle of Flowers and Flambeau. Scan one of these QR codes or both if you want to go to both to purchase tickets. The tickets include assigned seating along the parade route, food, drinks, and the chance to hang out with some of us from KSAT. While you're at it, you can also sign up to be a KSAT insider to get the first access to special events like these in the future.
Now downtown, you know it's going to be so busy during Fiesta, so figuring out where to park could be tricky. There are several lots around town, and event rates will be in effect throughout Fiesta. Now, depending on which city lot you park in, the most you'll pay is $15. Daniela Ibarra found out the best ways to pay. If you're lucky enough to find street parking during Fiesta, how do you pay for it? Sure, so you can pay if you see one of these um, on street meters or a pay station. We do have some lots that use pay stations as well. There's two ways you can pay. You can either pay the traditional way using your credit card, um, inserting it, following the instructions and paying ahead for time, or you can download our SA Park app. To see a full list of city lots and some ride share and via options to get to Fiesta, go to KSAT.com. Now the last remaining road closures along Lower Broadway downtown are over. Two way traffic is finally back in place for the remainder of the construction project that's going on there. That's supposed to be finished this summer. The Fiesta parade routes will cross Broadway at Brooklyn Avenue this year. Now that's an intersection that was already open to traffic and now crews are opening up sidewalks for pedestrians in the area. Fiesta may be a whole lot of fun, but it does come with a lot of work to make sure that all that food that's served is safe. The night team's John Paul Baraja shows us what's being done to keep everybody healthy. Fiesta synonymous with fantastic food. It's good. It's very good. I like it. How would you describe your tacos al pastor? They're the best in town. But what you don't see behind the scenes of all the fun? The people working to keep everyone safe. I'm just going to go and do an inspection real quick of your booth. Metro health inspectors are making sure food vendors meet health and sanitation standards. You take a bite and something that seems hot may not be hot enough according to the temperature requirements that we have. And you might eat it and go on about your night and not know you're set to the next day. According to Metro Health, its environmental officers will be at every Fiesta event to check booths routinely from the basics. Uh, paper towels and hand soap and then also uh, your dispenser has to have a, uh, a spigot on it. To testing the cleaning chemicals for each vendor. So, That's so what's strong. the sweet spot you guys are aiming for? 50 to 100. And then if you put too little bleach, it is very, very light in color and it doesn't do enough. So they're looking for a certain. And making sure food is cooked and stored at proper temperatures, both hot. There it goes. Yeah, so yeah. that's definitely above 135. And cold. Okay, so yes, sir, mind you, I was supposed to be at 41 and you're at 60. So everyone, myself included, can indulge. That's good. <laughs> and worry about the real issues, like finding your favorite food. Not chicken on the sticks, I'm not going to wait in the long line. Uh, Maria's tortillas. Come on, chicken on the sticks a classic. Yeah, it is a classic, but okay, I'll say chicken on the sticks. <laughs> Jokes aside, if you see something you don't think is up to code, you can always report it to 311. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. Now just in time for Fiesta, a collection of murals showcasing San Antonio's culinary and musical cultures have debuted. These are some of the pieces that you will see from two local artists. Their names are Eva Marengo Sanchez and Mike Argueo. They are part of a mural series called the Echoes of Market Square, spread across eight large columns. These are under I-35 between Dolorosa and Commerce Streets. A public art dedication is scheduled for tomorrow at 11 a.m. at the Pass at Market Square. You you can read more about these murals right now on ksat.com. Just look for this article on the homepage. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, well, we know that it was warm and humid to kick off this 2024 Fiesta season, but we do have changes that work in, especially this weekend. Promising rain chances really by late Saturday afternoon and even more so Saturday night, that all ahead of a cold front that's going to push through south central Texas, meaning a cooler into the weekend on Sunday and also a brief stretch of low humidity just in time for the river parade early next week. So we're going to time it out, get you all those details in your Fiesta forecast coming up a little bit later on. All right, thank you, Mia. Developing right now, Israel has retaliated against Iran. According to a U.S. official, Israeli missiles have hit a site in Iran. Now, right now, it's not clear if there have been any deaths because of this. This latest move comes after Iran launched hundreds of missiles and drones into Israel last weekend. This is a story that is unfolding as we speak. We'll keep you updated on air and online. 
25 years. That is the prison sentence for this woman, Miranda Casares, who was convicted of starving her four-year-old stepson to death. Yesterday, a jury took a little less than an hour to find her guilty of injury to a child. During the punishment phase, the defense asked the jury to sentence Casares to probation, while the state was seeking the maximum punishment of life in prison. Casares took the stand today, insisting that she's not the one who starved four-year-old Benjamin Cervera. Miranda, why did you starve Benjamin? I didn't starve him. He will not take responsibility for any of it. Correct? I never caused those injuries. Again, you're not taking responsibility for any of those injuries, correct? Yes, because I never hit him. Now, this case is not over yet. Benjamin's father, Brandon Cervera, has yet to go on trial. He'll be back in court next month, and he also faces up to life in prison if found guilty. A scary scene at a Northwest Side motel this morning. Gunshots, sirens, and SWAT officers surrounded this building. It all started around 5.30 this morning in the medical center near Fredericksburg Road. Police say they found a masked man with a gun who fired shots at officers and then barged into a guest's room. Those who were nearby described these chaotic moments. They got trucks, police is everywhere, ambulance, all that. So I'm being nosy, and I walk in the street a little bit, and the cop yelled at me and said, go back inside. I've seen something like this before, but like not in like live action. Now, eventually, the standoff ended peacefully after about four hours with police arresting a suspect, 42-year-old Johnny Munoz. Fiesta is a great time for fun and the food, but not always the healthiest option for those with diabetes. Next on the Night Beat here, how health experts say you can manage your condition during Fiesta. The corn on the cob, mm -hmm. smeared with butter and, hot, and red pepper. Oh, I could go and eat that forever. So many of us have a weakness for Fiesta food. Everything is delicious, but it's not always the best for you, especially if you're among the 16% of people in San Antonio with diabetes or the one third of people here who have pre-diabetes. In the interest of staying healthy, Stefania Jimenez went to a class that teaches people with diabetes or pre-diabetic conditions how to manage that. I try and stay healthy, but you have to be aware. You've met Steve Samet. He's 74 and, like a portion of San Antonians, has type 2 diabetes. He's getting help with that through a self-management class at UT Health San Antonio. Did you ever hear, do not eat carbs? Stay away from the white stuff. We talk about from what is diabetes into healthy eating. We talk about the medications. Registered dietitian Nora Katowski helps patients manage their diabetes through these classes. She says that begins with a balanced breakfast. I love eggs. We do typically recommend if we need to lose weight, maybe, you know, add another egg that's just the egg white, you know, remove the yolk. And then we add a little bit of healthy fat. Avocados also have great fibers. Building a healthy plate that's protein rich, healthy fats, high fiber are all going to help regulate that blood sugar. And that's the goal of a diabetes diet, minimizing the symptoms and complications as a result of high blood sugar. I always say you want at least half of your choices to be whole grain, high fiber. Prioritizing that protein is really going to help possibly prevent diabetes altogether and, and reverse it. Nora says these tips can apply to everyone seeking a healthy diet. So what should we stay away from to keep diabetes at bay? Carbs? Sugar? It's not only the sugar that's underlining, but it's also the fat content and then the high calorie that again, all of that is going to put us at risk for you know any chronic disease such as diabetes. Even those with diabetes can enjoy delicious food at Fiesta. Nora has a recommendation. The kebabs and they also sometimes may have the peppers in there. So you got the protein, you got the fiber and that is going to keep you very full and satiated. That's good enough for Steve who says he has a plan to stay on track. I've worked Fiesta mm -hmm. and I go Fiesta, I get corn, I get a nice uh, sausage on a stick and I'm good. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News.
Now you can take a quiz to learn your risk for developing diabetes. We have a link to that on our website. And if you don't have health insurance, we also have other information to help you manage that disease. All right, a lot to talk about in the weather department. Hopefully you all had a fantastic start to Fiesta. Yes, it was a little warm and humid out there, but at least it wasn't like Fiesta Fiesta last year, right? Where we had torrential rain and thunderstorms move across San Antonio. We were monitoring for the potential. It was always a low chance, but there was the potential to see a strong isolated thunderstorm move into at least our portions of the hill country all ahead of an approaching cool front. You can see there were some severe thunderstorms located near the Mason and Llano areas just north of Fredericksburg, but as expected with the loss of daytime heat and our atmosphere here at home was a little bit more stable than folks up to the north. That activity has fizzled out, so most of us are expected to stay quiet through the overnight, but we likely are going to see more of that cloud cover once again, maybe a little bit of patchy fog out the door first thing Friday morning as that front starts to slowly seep its way into south central Texas, but it's going to stall before we see that second push and more impactful push of cooler air arrive into the weekend. Mostly cloudy skies expected throughout the day tomorrow, just a 10% chance for a stray shower. But by tomorrow night, around 9 p.m., eyes will turn out west closer to the Rio Grande near places like Del Rio, even Eagle Pass. We could see a little cluster of rain, maybe a thunderstorm or two develop and then push eastward as we sleep into early Saturday morning. This is a look at your future cast by 4 a.m. Near and south of the Highway 90 corridor near Hondo, Pleasanton, Catula, Pearsall, maybe a little bit of rain possible there. Then the better chances, though, arrive late Saturday and into Saturday night. Right now, by Saturday evening, we've got a 60% chance for some scattered showers, maybe an isolated storm or two, even more widespread into the overnight on Saturday before we really start to dry things out into the back half of the weekend and into early next week. So let's talk about that setup. In the upper levels of the atmosphere right now, we've got a high pressure pressure system off to our south, a little disturbance area of low pressure over northern Mexico. But it's this low pressure system west of California that's essentially going to track eastward here over the next couple of days. There's that stalled boundary over south Texas. It's going to link up with that, allow more of that Pacific moisture to overrun that stalled front and give us those better rain chances late Saturday and into Saturday night. So that's going to be something to think about if you are planning on doing any of those fiesta activities. Definitely stay weather aware later in the day on Saturday and take the umbrella with you. You're not really going to need it into Sunday. There is the potential, especially across portions of the hill country. We could see a few pockets of one inch plus by the time all is said and done. Not everybody is going to see these totals, but we will need to monitor for a few pockets of heavy rain, but it is good rain and we definitely will need it after that boundary pushes through though. Again, it is going to be a cooler into the weekend up Upper 60 is a little windy and low humidity. That low humidity, by the way, is going to continue into Monday, which is fantastic news for the river parade. A little cooler than average before we start to warm things up into next week. I do want to mention we've been talking about all the fine folks that were out at Fiesta Fiesta. We've got to talk about our furry friends, right? We had these amazing photos sent into KSAT Connect. This is Heidi. She's got her flower crown on. She's ready to rock and roll. And then also Missy Lou says Viva Fiesta with the sombrero. Absolutely love it. Please continue to send your photos into KSAT Connect. We will show them over the next 10 days. All the Fiesta fun. Until then, we're going to go outside with live cam. Yes, the humidity is very much still in place, but again, especially by the second half of the upcoming weekend, things are going to be feeling really good out there for those Fiesta plants. Those little ones need to be in the pooch parade. They do. It's a spot for them. Love it. All right. Thank you, Mia. Let's turn to sports now with Larry. At least the Spurs season is over over, but still not good news for Zach Collins. Yeah, Zach Collins, I mean, the second it happened, it didn't look bad when his arm went up, but he instantly came down and started holding it. You can see a bump on his shoulder. Zach Collins had a shoulder injury in the Spurs last game of the season, and he will need surgery. And coming up, we will go one on one with SAFC Luke Hawkinson coming up. 
MRI revealed that Spurs big man Zach Collins suffered a torn labrum in his right shoulder that will require surgery, the team announced today. The injury occurred when Collins dislocated his shoulder on this play with 10.50 remaining in the third quarter of the Spurs season finale against the Pistons last Sunday. Collins is scheduled to have surgery in the coming days and he is expected to be ready for the start of next season. San Antonio FC is coming off a scoreless draw on their only home match for the month of April. Now SAFC prepares for two straight road games starting first with the Eastern Conference Hartford Athletic. Producer Daniel Villanueva and Fotok Mark Mendez went out to practice today getting a preview for Saturday's match before San Antonio heads to colder climates. Super excited. There's, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of things to work on, and there's, you know, every game we keep growing and getting better, and we get to come out every week, every every day, and, and kind of focus on the process and uh, invest in our, our teammates, and we're doing that every day to hopefully get results on the weekend. This team is playing three out of the four matches in April on the road. For you, what do you like doing more? You like playing at home, or you like playing on the road? I think any soccer player uh, likes to play at home in front of their crowd, have that energy behind them. Um, but there's also something to be said about making an opponent's field your own. Uh, walking out with points on an opponent's field is an amazing feeling. Uh, and, you know, hopefully we can do that this weekend. The last couple of seasons on road matches, this team would get together and play a lot of video games, like in a conference room at the hotel or something like that. Has, is there like a, an activity that this team is doing on the road yet to kind of like bond and like just kind of get to know each other like as a group setting? I, I've seen plenty of games. I've been roped into a chess game. I have nothing. I, I know nothing about chess, but uh, after a delay in the airport, Juan, Juan Agudelo uh, looked at me and told me to download the chess app. Uh, and I uh, actually uh, had no idea what I was doing, but uh, you know, so there's little things like that, games that we get to play with each other. Uh, you know, I've seen Nintendo switches all the time, uh, card games. So yeah, there's plenty of do things to do together and make memories like that. So are you liking the chess? Are you learning? <laughs> it's still downloaded on my phone. I'm prepared for this weekend just in case. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks. Larry, back to you. Thank you, Luke. Number 12, Quentin Dormady will start a quarterback for the Brahmas when they host the Michigan Panthers Saturday night at 6 at the Alamo Dome. Dormady out of Bernie High School will take the field in front of family and friends. You know that's going to be awesome for the Dormady family. And just as cool, the game is going on during Fiesta, meaning you might be able to snag a Brahmas Fiesta medal. It's going to be, be pretty cool for uh, y'all to get. So uh, come out and support us, get you a medal. Everybody in San Antonio go want it, but it's only one way to get it, you know, and that's coming to the game. And if you come to the ball game, I'm going to give you one. So uh, these are really neat. It's a it's a great tradition. I'm going to I'm going to pin mine on. So looks good on you, coach. You could buy a medal online at the game Saturday or as part of a ticket medal package through the Brahmas. On the high school diamonds tonight, teams are looking to solidify their playoff seating as the Jefferson Mustangs were looking to get an upset win against Brackenridge. Bottom of the first, Bracken scoring position, and a wild pitch goes all the way to the backstop. That's easy money for Jordan Monroy to stroll home to get the scoring going. But the Mustangs went on a stampede. Fernando Benitez, Reese Bloops went into right field. The catch can't be made, bringing in two more runs as Jefferson will go on to win it by the final of 6-4. Then over on the softball diamond, the Edison Golden Bears are taking on Jefferson, and the Bears came out swinging, scoring three runs in the bottom of the first. Then in the second, Chipper Mayorga blasts one right back up the middle, bringing home Adamari Gattaca from second. Isis Ortiz looking to take third. The throw is too low. Everyone comes home as Edison dominated this one, winning 18 to nothing in just three innings. Texas Rangers Jack Leiter made his MLB debut after the break. The Rangers closed out their series of the Tigers today and rookie Jack Leiter, the son of 19-year MLB veteran and two-time World Series champion Al Leiter, making his big league debut today. Bottom of the first, Leiter strikes out the first batter he sees on three pitches. His family loves it, of course, but Jack got roughed up, allowing seven earned runs in three and two-thirds of an inning with three walks and three Ks. Top eight, runners on the corners for Corey Seager, and he grounds at the first. Spencer Torkelson throws it away, trying to get the runner on at second. Leote Tavares scores to make it 8 to 7 Rangers and Texas takes it 9 to 7 taking 3 of the 4 from the Tigers and in Texas League ball tonight the CC Hooks walked off the missions 4 to 3 in 10 innings San Antonio is now 6 and 6
Thank you, Larry. You're welcome. We'll be right back.